gentlemen, this House believes that multinational corporations should trade with Hamas in Gaza and in the areas that they control. Now, we've seen the effect of what a blockade has done, only further making a basic suppression of individual rights within Gaza in and of itself. And what we have also seen is the inability for Hamas or the people who are there being suppressed by them to overthrow the Hamas in and of itself. We actually just saw the Mavi Marmara case where the Israeli government decided their blockade wasn't working and hence increased humanitarian aid to the Gaza Strip. However, humanitarian aid only makes populations in, uh, codependent on international organizations. And that is why we have to go one step further and invite multinational corporations to actively trade with this rebel group who is trying to overthrow the Israeli government and the Palestinian authorities. So they're actually opposing two separate parties. And that is what we will be talking about today. I'd offer, like, the, offer a few uh, definitions first. A multinational corporation is one which actively trades in more than one country and has the ability to allocate resources from one sovereign area to another sovereign area. The uh, second thing is uh, territory. That's is occupied territory where a rebel group, in this case the Hamas, is able to essentially control the population and is currently fighting a struggle and a gain for more territory over, over other areas in which they see control, in this case all of Israel uh, and the West Bank. And finally, we'll define the, uh, the idea of, uh, of usurping power as this rebel group in and of itself, in this case, the example I brought, the Hamas, their ability to overthrow a government. Their goal is to change, uh, to overthrow a government. Now, let's talk about three things. Number one, rebel groups and how they generate uh, income, okay, income generating activities and, and why involving trade will move them away from weapons smuggling, from drug running, from the import of uh, human trafficking, and how by involving trade will actually lessen the effects of their activities on the state that they're opposing. The second thing we're going to talk about is the difference between trade and humanitarian aid, and why trade makes populations that are being suppressed by rebel groups go one step further to being more independent as opposed to codependent on international organizations. And finally, we'll talk about how trade is a, 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 a means in order to pacify a rebel group's activity to make them less violent and if it succeeds in that success, eventually bring them to the negotiating table so that both kinds of successes are met in terms of ending conflict and moving forward towards peace. Now, let's talk about the situation right now with the Hamas. We have a group which was founded 20 years ago with the aims to throw the Jews into the sea, to overthrow and usurp the power of, in this case, Israel, because there was areas which were lived. Now, we saw Israel take a few measures. Number one, removing their citizens from the occupied territory that they were trying to overthrow, in this case, Gaza, and there are still citizens in uh, the West Bank. But let's look at the difference between Gaza and the West Bank. There has been a policy of economic reliability and economic indicators. There's been an investment conference which has happened in Bethlehem bringing hundreds of million dollars of aid in terms of company benefits and in terms of trade benefits as opposed to just providing food and water and other humanitarian aid. We see new cities being built in the West Bank. We see the ability for new infrastructure being built. We see the quality of life going up and the amount of violent and resistant activity going down. This is not the case going on in Gaza. The policy is essentially like this. The blockade is meant to struggle and to strangle the Hamas. But how do they compensate for it? They go to other groups which in and of itself generate more funds through illicit activity. They bring in drugs into Israel. They bring in uh, weapon smuggling. They find other means because this is an ideological struggle. It's not one just about legitimate grievances against the state of Israel. It is one in which they want to continue all the way forward. And because it is an ideological struggle, the way that you pair against this is by bringing in more opportunity so they want to focus on the economic abilities and the economic prowess as opposed to just focusing on the ability for them to resist and to struggle. Yes. But you didn't understand the debate. The assumption is that the rebel group can allow those multinational groups to operate in their other land. But Israel is controlling the fact of the land, so they cannot allow those companies to, to, to work in this in Gaza, for example. Actually, this is why we're exactly saying why they should allow these companies to exist in these areas, because you have a ruling structure, but what you don't have is the resources for that ruling structure to give services to their citizens. And now they're able to say, this is the way it is. Status quo acts like this. Israel is oppressing us because they're not allowing us to have the resources and the legitimate trade, and we have to rely on humanitarian aid, which is a good transition to my second point. However, we also have to recognize that this, when we do bring trade and we do go one step further, people now have opportunity. 
An economic opportunity, as opposed to relying on organizations, allows them to say, I have a future. I now have a job. Unemployment in this area is 40%. Why? It's not because of the lack of will. It's because of the lack of opportunity. When people have to rely on international organizations, we can look at Sudan as an example. We can also look at uh, uh, Sri Lanka with the Tamil Tigers. We end up having the end of conflict going through tens of thousands of people dying and more violence being carried out and the perpetuation of violence because humanitarian aid takes away from from opportunity, it only furthers conflict. However, when trade is being brought in and multinational corporations are able to come in and to say, this is how I want to operate, we are now going to generate jobs, we are now going to generate the ability for them to have income, and in doing so, they move forward towards opportunity. And this goes on to the third point. We are more likely to end conflict if people have a horizon in the future. Rebel groups, and in this case the Hamas, have two reasons why they resist the people who are the sovereign nation and why they want to overthrow the government. A, it's because they were treated wrongly and they came to the point they were willing to rise up and to overthrow the people who were controlling them. Or B, they have ideological grievances and they do this until they want to go to an end. How does this solve the A? The legitimate grievances and the, and the citizens who are being oppressed and who were eventually caused to to rise up and to overthrow the government were because of grievances. They were either treated as second class citizens in this case, they were suppressed, there was checkpoints, there was things that happened which limited their ability to have fine opportunities. And once we invite trade in and we bring MNCs in to give them more opportunities to have job creation and to not make them reliant on organizations like the United Nations and third sector nonprofits, we say, your future is now in your own hands. We recognize that you have a grievance with this, but in order to bring in companies, we're going to maybe give you another opportunity. A, to have the increased economic opportunity, which is more likely to bring the rebel groups to focus on other activities which will raise legitimate income for them, as opposed to having activities which hurt the state through weapons trafficking, through drug smuggling, through uh, 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 you know human smuggling, any kind of other activities that they have to do in the black market because they don't have access to the regular market. By increasing access to the regular market and by bringing them forward to, to stop being dependent on economic activities and humanitarian aid, you give them a future, you give them the ability and, and quickness to maybe have a reason to come back to the table, and you protect the state in and of itself because they're no longer a threat in terms of the reasons for resisting because you've solved a lot of their grievances. Guinness will further give a deeper level of analysis of this. That's why I urge you to vote for the proposition today. Thank you.